Today we're talking about the Canon R3. Everything you're going to see in photos and videos is straight out of camera with no edits. Also, this review is not sponsored by Canon in any way. I purchased this camera with my own dollars from my local camera shop, BJ Photo. Go check them out if you're in the Kitchener, Waterloo slash Toronto, Canada area. Welcome to the Canon R3 review. We are out here currently in a town called Nelson, in British Columbia. It's quite nice, as you can see. And we have a bit of an exciting uh, couple of days planned. So come with me for the review, the Canon R3. And also there are RAW files, so if you want to download some of the images that you're seeing, uh, head on over to the link in the description, and they, they can be yours. Or, or this ladies. And that, my friends, is the last time that I talked to the camera on this trip. I thought that I, I went out there, I, had, I brought a tripod, I had friends that could have filmed for me, and I, I forgot. We were having too much fun out in the, the wilderness. We went to a place called Baldface Lodge. You're going to see a lot of footage from it. I would say it's probably the most famous of all of the snowboard places in the world, started by Craig Kelly, uh, who is probably the snowboarder that pushed snowboarding in general uh, the most out of any human being, uh, as well as JP, his partner in the project. And JP has just done an incredible job over the past bunch of years. You, you don't care about that. You, you're here for the, the Canon R3 review. One quick mention before we get to the review, uh, Book More Weddings 2022, which is my flagship course, came out yesterday. So if you are a wedding photographer and you're interested in really accelerating the growth of your business in 2022, go to the link and check that out. Uh, there is a lot of amazing content in there, uh, specifically 10 things that you have to be doing in 2022 in order to be accelerating your business as fast as you can be. And also efficiently, you don't want to be doing a lot of different stuff that's just wasting your time. You want to do the things that actually will uh, give you results and actually book you work and uh, get you out there photographing weddings. So if you're a wedding photographer, check that out until the end of the month, February 28th, it comes with a number of bonuses. So not only do you get Book More Weddings 2022 if you get this before the end of the month, but you get my full Lightroom preset collection, which is usually a $49 value on its own. Wedding filmmaking for photographers, this is a full course worth $74. Booking more elopements, $179 value. Booking more micro weddings, $119. These are all included to you that you don't got to pay them. They're just included. Off camera flash for wedding photographers, my wedding photo day checklist, my pricing templates, and the email templates that I actually use to communicate with couples. Those are all included if you get in on Book More Weddings 2022 before the end of the month. And if you are a member on the member site, you can sign up just for the single month and get instant access to this as well. Hope that you see everything. You, you like it so much, you stick around, but you're not committed to any sort of a yearly contract or anything. You can sign up for the month, uh, get all access to everything if you want. Um, hope they stick around though. On to the review. Oh yeah. It identifies uh, the, the face detect was actually working with the snowboarder wearing a helmet and also wearing uh, goggles and everything and it just knew uh, who that was and that it was a human being that I was trying to track and I feel like every single frame is just like perfectly in focus. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of slow shutter now. Um, I'm going to go, I don't have an ND so I'm going to actually go up to f11. I'm going to bring my shutter down to something like, I don't know, let's do 1 60th of a second at f11. Here we go. Shadi coming through. And there it is. Canon R3 is the most complete hybrid camera that Canon has ever released. It is a 24 megapixel CMOS stacked backside illuminated sensor. I don't know which configuration those those words all go into. What it basically means is it's the best of the best and a stack sensor is going to give you a super fast readout. So when you're taking photos, say for instance me, I'm at a wedding day taking lots of photos, all of a sudden I have to record a video because I'm there doing hybrid coverage, it will just allow you to do that. Uh, another thing that a stack sensor does is that the, the readout is so fast that you get very minimal rolling shutter. So when you're dragging your camera left or right, you're not going to see a lot of craziness and weird sideways lines happening. And I am a big fan of that. The eye control autofocus uh, I've, from what I've seen, has had mixed reviews, I think, uh, depending on specific individuals. For my eyeballs, you basically you get it, you configure it, and uh, hopefully it works for you. I guess there's a few people that it hasn't worked exactly perfectly. For me, once I configured it to my eye, you basically hit configure, you look at a few different zones, and it. Um, I can't really show you a screen grab of it because my eye has to be 
actually in the viewfinder. And for me, whatever I'm looking at, that little yellow circle is on there. I half press, it locks into that, uh, whatever that subject is. It's worked very, very well for me. And from my experiences, it is incredibly helpful um, when you're in mixed environments where there's different people, but you want to be focusing on different things throughout there. Or uh, the, the example that Sam Hurd gave, we did a, a video about the, he's already shot 30,000 frames in wedding photography on the Canon R3. And uh, his example was basically that a groom or a groomsman's getting their boudoir done up here and their face is in the frame, but you want to be focusing on this, that it's very easy to quickly override. Just look at what you want it to focus on and then focus on it. Um, rather than going back, pulling your face off the camera and doing the touch to, to vine, which also does work very well. It's just a little bit easier to just stay in the viewfinder and get everything done through the EVF. So my summary of the I. AF, or I guess there's now there's multiple IAFs. The the eye control AF, me controlling the autofocus points with my eyeball, uh, it's worked incredibly well for me, and I find it super valuable. Another incredible thing for me in this camera is that the files are really great. Um, that for a long time Canon has kind of lagged a little bit behind in dynamic range. Now I would say the files are right up there with any of the cameras uh, or any of the flagship bodies. I think the struggle right now is that all of the flagship bodies, whether you're looking at the Sony A1 or the Nikon Z9 or the the Canon R3, they are all kind of right there together in all aspects, which is really, really cool. Um, you just kind of have to select the one that exactly fits the niche for you, or it just fits the lenses that you already own and it makes the transition a little bit easier for you. I find that the ISO is very, very usable up to 12,800 ISO. You can go above that if you want, but at 12,800, I feel like it's kind of the, I, I will never find myself in an environment that I need to really push above that. Um, you're seeing a few examples on the screen right now of higher ISOs, and really there is nothing to complain about. I am very, very happy with the high ISO performance of this camera, as well as the dynamic range, and um, just the shadow recovery. Everything just works as you would expect when you get the files back. Nothing's going to surprise you, like the the all of a sudden the highlights just won't come back in a shot that you expected them to, or when you're boosting the shadows, you're getting weird banding. There's nothing like that that has happened in my experience so far. The color accuracy, uh, I'm sure you, you, if you're a Canon camera user, you probably very much enjoy the colors and the color accuracy. I find that it is just, it, it feels very true to the scene, but also makes it maybe feel a little bit nicer. Um, I find that I am usually on shade white balance, although I am happy to let this camera run a lot more on automatic white balance. I won't do that with Sony cameras, but I am happy to do that with Canon cameras. That the camera just kind of knows what situation it's in, it sets the correct white balance and it doesn't fade in between and make anything too weird. So uh, shout out to the auto white balance, but I usually do still lock my white balance just for ease of use in post-production. The flicker reduction for the electronic shutter is also much more helpful than I expected it to be. Um, I didn't have a, a way to screen record while we were out in the lodge, but basically what it does is it sets uh, or it gives you the shutter speed that you should be using uh, in order to minimize flicker within a certain scene, which takes a lot of the guesswork away from it that you just know that if you're doing photos at that exact shutter speed that there is not going to be any issue with flicker. This camera is incredible when it comes to high frame rates and the focus just, I, I find myself losing very, very few images even if there is blowing snow coming in the foreground, you can customize your autofocus settings to basically go into it. If you know you're going to be in a situation where you're going to be focused on an element out here, you're going to be focused on a person out there, and there's going to be something passing in between quickly. Say there's going to be like you're going to be tracking somebody, there's going to be trees going in between you. You can set your autofocus up to know that that's the scene that it's actually encountering, and it will do an incredible job. I find that if I just set it to automatic mode, full every single autofocus point, and add face detect to that, that I'm getting something that's very, very good for most scenes. And uh, I would say wedding day, I'm happy to stay in that mode, set a button of some sort to disable eye or face or um, change it from subject detect um, back to just regular in case you need that. But I would say it's a quick tap to override. So if you see something that's going weird, just do a quick tap and it'll track that subject rather than whatever it thinks it's uh, supposed to be tracking. I would say so far in my experience, one single time is the only time that I've had to tell it to do something other than what it's automatically deciding to do. I feel like we get along very well, myself and the, and the camera choices. We seem to have the same idea of what the subject is in the frame uh, at all times. You can also use this back button back here. So um, basically rather than using a joystick to move the focus point around, if you are using focus point or using clusters or whatever it might be, um, you can use this button on the back here, which actually isn't 
doesn't like you can just move your thumb around it and it will actually change the autofocus point around. Really cool feature and I'm happy I don't find myself using this a whole lot, but I'm happy that they didn't give us the whole swipe bar like they did on the R and take up a bunch of real estate in order to do something that was a little bit out of the box. Maybe I will find myself using that a little bit more over time, but for now uh, the automatic choices that this camera and the autofocus are making, I am very happy with. This camera will give you 30 frames a second in electronic shutter or 12 frames a second in mechanical. I would say even snowboarding like this, I am happy. 12 frames a second I feel like is more than enough. 30 frames a second, obviously if you're doing something that's even faster movement, um, it might be recommended. Or if you just want more options for that decisive moment, you have that ability to shoot 30 frames per second. The highest shutter speed available to you in electronic shutter mode is one slash 64,000. So you can shoot very, very quickly and you can freeze whatever action you want. And remember high ISO, you can get that ISO up if it is a bit of a darker cloudy day or whatever it might be. Um, you can still shoot with an incredibly high frame rate. I don't know why I would need that, that fast of a shutter speed, but it, it's a thing that you can do if you want. The viewfinder, as you can see here, quite large. Maybe it's not quite in focus. Here it is. Big viewfinder, uh, very comfortable to use. You'll uh, probably, I found this falling off a few times in my backpack, so maybe uh, I'll let you know if I lose one. It's not as uh, delicate as something like the Nikon D750 where you would lose it within an hour and a half of taking it out of the box, but it does pop off from time to time, just something to be aware of. Card slot, CF Express Type B. So if you don't have these cards, you'll have to get them. Um, kind of annoying. I, I, I'm hoping that one CF Express shows its dominance at some point here and we all kind of get on the same page rather than some Sony cameras using CF Express Type A, CF Express Type B. Um, and I guess that's it. That's not really that confusing. But I hope that at some point we do the USB-C thing where everybody just agrees that this is the, the media that we should be using. As a longtime Nikon shooter, I am very, very happy to have this wheel. This wheel I, I was the most jealous of whenever I saw people on Canon cameras and they were always just like cycling through images. Um, I find that this wheel is just very ergonomic and very nice to use. And to speak to the ergonomics of the camera, while this is a full grip body, it's like a full size body obviously, it is slightly smaller than what I would expect. So it's not, if you're taking a Canon R5 and you're putting a grip on it, it's gonna be bigger than this camera body. Um, basically the fact that they can put everything inside makes the camera body overall a little bit smaller, I think, and I am super happy with it. One thing that I do absolutely hate is the on off switch down here. So the on off switch is right there. Um, I wish that everyone would just do it at the Nikon and I guess Sony way where it's just on off button up here. That is so much easier. My hand is on the camera. I don't need to do anything with this. You need a second hand. You need a second hand to like come down here, which is very, very weird. The R6 has the button up here and that's fine. Um, you, again, you need two hands to turn the camera on and off. Um, the reason I guess maybe that, that it annoys me is that I am somebody that is turning the camera off quite often. Uh, I feel like maybe with mirrorless cameras, also it's a battery thing that if I'm turning my camera off when I know I'm not gonna be using it, I'm at a wedding day for eight hours, maybe collectively I've turned the camera off for maybe three of those hours. I think that it will be giving me additional battery life and maybe it's just something that came from when I was always shooting digital SLRs that I was always turning them off and on because there was no startup time really. With this camera, you're also going to find that there's not a whole lot of startup time either. That let's, let's do a test right now. Here we go, on, yeah, basically, you're pretty much good to go instantly within maybe a half second, quarter second. I'm sure somebody's done the math, but it is more than fast enough to be turning it off and on if you're not using it. Um, again, just a bit annoying. It's actually more ergonomic if you're using the grip, so your fingers here doing photos, that you can actually have access to this with, uh, with one hand. To speak to the gripped body in general, I don't love using one. This is my camera. This is the camera that I'm going to be using for wedding days. And in a wedding day environment, it's awesome. It's great. For backcountry snowboarding, it's kind of a little bit annoying. It doesn't quite fit in a backpack properly, um, but if that's not going to be a thing for you, don't worry about it. We, we made it work, but it wasn't the most ideal. I would have preferred a Sony A1 style body, I think, um, in most situations, but you might be looking at this review and being like, I like it because of the grip. And if that's the case, don't worry about what I'm telling you. Just if you want the grip, get the grip. The uh, record button is also in a very nice spot here. So when you are using the camera like this, if you're using the, the vertical grip, there's no record button easily there for you. But if you're recording a normal landscape style video, um, I find that I like the record button there a lot, that I'm very much used to kind of having it up here and my brain very quickly got used to this and this feels a little bit more comfortable to me now. Um, I don't know if it's just because I've been using this camera exclusively for the past week or so, um, but I very, very much like having the record button there. Um, to speak to something that is important to hybrid shooters, 
you can record videos from photo mode. So this was an issue for the Canon R6, which is super annoying. Uh, basically, they made it so you can't map video settings to C3. So your custom settings three is what settings this button's going to read from. So as soon as you hit the record button when you're in photo mode, whatever the settings you've saved to C3. So if you've saved manual video, 4K, whatever it might be, um, you're going to launch into those settings, which is awesome for doing those hybrid photo video wedding days or travel shoots or whatever it might be. So one bummer about this camera, uh, this might not be important to you, but it's kind of a bummer for me. The, uh, the HDMI port is just a little micro HDMI. You get a full size Cat5 LAN, so you get, you get the full size of this, but you get, unfortunately, the mini of the, uh, the HDMI here. So that's a bit of a bummer. Um, another thing that I really love about Sony cameras is the fact that they separate the mic and the headphone door. I find that I rarely use headphones. I'm always using a mic. I'm just monitoring by uh, visually. And I don't need all of this uh, this open. I just want one little door where I can just put my mic. Another thing that I really loved about the Sony A4 was the fact that the mic port was actually above the screen. So if you had a mic say like this Rode Video Mic Pro here, and you put that in the side here, it wouldn't actually obscure any of your screen. Here, you're gonna lose a little bit just at the top. It's not really a big deal, but I wish there was just a little bit higher up. Another interesting thing, uh, one thing that I haven't actually used yet, is this multi-interface shoe. So you can actually now, uh, you can start getting attachments and, and microphones and things that will actually read right into the camera. So you don't actually need a cable to come over here to the mic. Um, I'm excited to see the progression of that. I wish that that progression was happening faster. I wish Rode was on board and they would start designing their products for both Sony and Canon cameras um, with this multi-interface shoe because it is something that I want and it's a bit of a bummer that doesn't exist yet. When it comes to the IBIS, uh, the in-body image stabilization, I don't know if it's better than the R6, but it does seem to walk. The, I don't know if you ever used a wide angle lens. So uh, I use the 16, the 16 that's on the Canon R6 here a lot. And whenever you're moving, you get this little edge warble just down in the corners. It annoys me. You can zoom it in a little bit to kind of get around it. Um, but it definitely is a known issue. And the easy fix that everybody's screaming at Canon for is to be able to decouple the image stabilization. So basically you only want to run lens stabilization if you have lens or maybe for some reason you only want to run just internal and not the lens stabilization and to be able to select which ones you want will likely give you more flexibility and probably be able to if you're just using lens stabilization there's a pretty good chance you're not actually going to get that lens wobble on the side but unfortunately not a setting that we have yet i will say though it seemed better on the canon r3 when using the, the wide angle lens it didn't seem like it was doing anything distracting as much i don't know maybe if that's the rolling shutter that it's better in this than it is in the r6 but it is definitely something that I noticed. When it comes to the actual usability of the IBIS um, and also I guess the image stabilization and lenses, I love it on the Canon system. It is definitely geared for you being kind of a, more of a human tripod than it is geared for you to actually do like very cinematic nice movements. You'll find that it fights those movements sometimes or does some weird things that you don't want it to do. If you just want to be a human tripod, you're, you're taking photos, you get down to a half second very easily handheld. You get down to a second if you're taking two or three frames. I'm going to say like maybe half of them are usually going to be completely nice and crisp and in focus. Um, so human tripod, really, really great. Moving, beautiful cinematic movements. Not really there yet. And I really am hoping that that gets a little bit better, but I will say that Canon and Nikon, ah, I, I, they used to have all of my favorite IBIS and, and stabilization, but now with Sony's active stabilization that's going to be coming out on their newer cameras, as well as the, the A4 and the A7 III, and I believe the A1 uh, is that the active stabilization on that is really, really good, and it definitely impressed me, so I would now rank Sony strangely above that, but you get a little bit of crop whenever you actually put in active stabilization where you get no crop in this. So I guess something to think about, but I will say that, again, all of these cameras uh, just deliver amazing stable video footage photos out of camera. To talk about the screen, you get this full articulating screen, which is not something you see on the other flagship cameras. So if that's something that's important to you, uh, you do have access to that. I will also say in bright sun, very easy to use the screen and very easy to use the EVF. I have found that Sony screens specifically have been a little bit difficult to see in bright light. Even when the screen is set to high, I will say that just out in the world, you're going to have a pretty good time with the screen. You're going to be able to see what you're doing. Uh, one weird thing though, you can't, at least in my experimentation, you can't have the histogram up while actually recording a video, as well as you can't have the, the leveler. So leveler and the histogram disappear when you start recording footage. It would be nice to at least have the histogram up, um, but you are seeing pretty much what you're doing on the screen here, so it's not too big of a deal. Um, I will say this is obviously like the, the weak point of the camera, and that's why most manufacturers don't put a full flip screen in, because this is likely going to be the piece of your camera that's going to break, whereas everything else is just nice and all one piece. One more annoying thing, maybe the last annoying thing uh, on this camera is that yes, it has a USB-C 
port here you can you can plug in you can be you can if you're using the camera you're doing a long time lapse you can plug in you can deliver power to this camera from a power bank what you can't do is you can't charge the battery so as soon as you turn the camera off all of a sudden it's not going to be drawing any power from there unless you have a device uh, it's, i think it's called power send technology so if it has power send technology it'll it'll send power to here and you can charge it by usb c unfortunately if you just find a usb c cord and plug it into a wall or a computer it is not going to charge this camera this is the size of the charger that this camera comes with it's like almost the size of the camera and when you're you're out traveling it's kind of a big big pain so I would recommend, unfortunately, probably buying the Canon USB-C charger for this, um, which is another thing to buy and to carry around. Would be amazing if you just use any USB-C cable and just charge it. When it comes to video, uh, this thing is fully spec'd out. It comes with, I would say, my favorite menu system of any of the manufacturers. You select what you want and it's very, very easy. It does internal raw video, it does 4K 60, it does 4K 120. You can now set the overheat warning, kind of similar to Sony cameras. I was running 4K 60 a lot and I had no issues. Uh, 4K 120, apparently when you get around on the 10 minute mark, if you're trying to do a continuous clip, you'll likely start to see an overheat warning pop up and at some point the camera will turn off. But I would say that that's a pretty extreme case and I for one don't typically run uh, 120 frames a second in 4K. You'll also, uh, you'll see that the file is actually delivered to you in, in 29.9. So you're not seeing, you're not getting the, the full playback. You're also not getting audio in uh, 120 frames per second at 4K. Uh, again, not a huge deal for me, but if that's something that's important to you, something that you should definitely be aware of. As I mentioned, big charger, big battery. This battery will last you all day if you're at a wedding shoot. Um, it would be maybe nice to have a second battery since it's a pain and you can't just charge it USB-C and now all of a sudden you gotta have this in your backpack if you, uh, if you don't have the the power send technology USB-C, but I suspect that I could have done the entire trip. So all four or five days that we were gone on one single battery, I charged it one time. And when I did charge it, it was only down one of the four battery bars that were uh, on the display here. So yeah, overall, I am incredibly happy with this camera. It does everything that I could ever need it to, as well as has the fully articulating screen so I can do some self video coverage out there in the world. I am very happy with this camera and I am very happy with the Canon RF uh, ecosystem in general right now. Uh, my main lenses, I guess for wedding days, I'm on this Samyang 85. So typically main camera body, Samyang 85 1.4, which I actually like more than the, the Canon L 1.2. And then on my second camera, I typically have this 35 1.8. And I am very happy to cover any events or cover any wedding days or really anything that I would want with those two cameras. Main camera being the R3, second camera being the R6 that you're seeing this recorded on. Also, if you're like, why is the quality slightly worse on this than it is on here? It's because I'm recording this in 1080p because if I try to record 4K and do this half hour long clip that I'm gonna be editing from, my camera unfortunately will slowly start to overheat. I could go get around that by having a screen, but I don't, and I just work with the camera as it is. That is all for the review of the Canon R3. There will be a lot more content on the channel throughout the next year, maybe two years, maybe three years. I don't know. Uh, I'm very happy with this camera right now. And uh, yeah, that's kind of all I have to say. If you're considering this, it is an incredible camera. Uh, obviously, make sure you're going to be using most of the features. While it is nice to have kind of un unlimited features to do any project, any video job, any photo job, if that's not something that realistically is going to enter your world, then it doesn't really make sense to step all the way up to a camera like this when something like the R6 can get you pretty close for a lot less money. That said, if you are going to be using a lot of the features of this camera, it is definitely worth it. And it is definitely a camera that I purchased with my own money. This isn't sponsored by Canon or anything. This is a, a camera that I bought from our local dealer, BJ Photo. If you're in the Kitchener, Waterloo, Canada area or anywhere in Canada, ship anywhere in the world, but if you're in Canada, maybe check them out because they are an incredible family run shop and I am there quite a lot. So thanks for watching. Any questions you have, please put them in the comments below. We are off to Hawaii this week um, with a Nikon camera. So don't forget to subscribe and a, a lot more, a lot more videos to come. Don't forget book more weddings 2022 out now. Go get it uh, before the end of the month, before the end of February and you can get all the bonuses with it or you can just sign up to the member site and, and get access to, to all that as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again on another time.